Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warmer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are on Excavation Site playing as the Beastmen against the Skaven. And in this matchup we did go with a Vanguard build, so, and it's a small map, so things are going to kick off right away. Uh, so I do quickly want to go over the composition both sides brought before we kick things off. Um, and uh, so going with the Vanguard build, uh, one of my cho my lore choice here is a little bit odd. Uh, something you're not going to see all that often. Now, granted, Kazrak did, is better than he used to be. Um, he did get Vanguard deployment on his chariot now. He's got a great straight weapon strength of 400, bonus for infantry of 28, so pretty ludicrous stats there. Charge bonus of 113. Um, he calls fear. He's got some missile resist. He's immune to psychology. 100 armor. Uh, against Skaven, he's kind of hard to snipe. He's got apocalyptic vision, uh, scourge for poison and melee attack. Melee defense, uh, but most importantly, what I really wanted to try out this game was actually the dark mail. Uh, this is an item you'll almost never see. It's a debuff to casters around Kazrak. Now, this used to be a total trash skill that only worked when a caster casted anything, and it had a fairly short duration. It's gotten improved a little bit. Now it works on any caster within 40 meters of Kazrak, so I figured, you know, Skaven, you're basically guaranteed they're going to bring at least one caster. Um, who's going to be close to the front line, and in certain cases they'll even bring more casters, so you never know, they, they could be useful. Uh, it could be, and I figured, why not give it a try? <laughs> the rest of this, pretty generic sort of Vanguard, well, not exactly generic Vanguard build. I didn't fully invest in Vanguard units. Uh, the front line is a bunch of gore herd, four units of them, backed by the Blackhorn Ravagers of the Regiment of Renown, with uh, the Perfect Vigor skill from the uh, Centigors, the Rowdy. Um, otherwise, I do believe they basically just have more armor than normal gores, and uh, gores with shields, and They'll have better stats because they're nigh veterancy, but definitely a very sol solid unit. Uh, backed by two Angora Raiders for the archers, for some archery support. Uh, the Butchers of Kalkin Guard, because I figured on a small map like this, they can close the gap pretty quickly, and uh, once they're in the fight, that terror and the region should be very, very helpful, and it does give me some AP that this list otherwise lacks. Uh, Brace Shaman of the Wild, also mounted on a chariot, um, coming in with the Volve Brace Cream, uh, Bestial Surge, as well as Jacket Dagger. I think a pretty solid choice here. You're going to run a muck through the enemy infantry, recharge his jacket dagger, cast evolve to melt Skaven troops, um, and with Brace Cream he can keep my vigor up with Bestial Surge. Finally out on the periphery, a whole bunch of Centigors over here. We do have uh, normal Centigors with Grey Weapons, in case my opponent went with the Doom Wheel, uh, or more precisely the Sons of Goros, so Centigors with Grey Weapons, but Regiment of Renown. Uh, they have Magic Damage and Guardian. Uh, honestly, the Guardian's not going to... and a bit more armor than normal Centigors, actually quite a bit more, I believe 35 more, but... Uh, the main th reason I brought him here was just to have a better great weapon unit to deal with um, Doom Wheels if my opponent brought those. And in the back line, three units of Centigors kind of spaced out to hit my opponent, depending on where he deployed, because I wasn't entirely sure. Now, my opponent went with something a little interesting here, a very wide build. He's got a whole bunch of Skaven Slaves, Clan Rats mixed all over the place, two Stormvermen anchoring things in the center, and then a front line with some Skaven Slaves, two Warp Fire Throwers, a big surprise there, uh, Poison Wind Globe Deer, so very short range sort of fire support. And uh, his only sort of solution for dealing with uh, high-end sort of infantry or uh, things like Bestigors or uh, heavily armored troops are these two Plague Priests. So uh, I was a little surprised by that. I don't necessarily think that's the best idea uh, against Beastmen because they can bring a lot of Bestigors and you'll struggle against armor. But, you know, the Plague Priests can melt them down. They can definitely do quite a bit of hurt and uh, over time they'll whittle your, your Bestigors down. So uh, we'll definitely see how... And obviously in this situation it's not going to matter because I didn't bring Bestigors. So against those, Stormman will be really potent and uh, even Clan Rats will do some damage to them. And of course, Warp Fire Throwers could potentially lay down quite a bit of a smackdown on my guys. My opponent also does have Lord Skrullk here coming in with the Lee Rubonicus, Rod of Corruption, um, and uh, what else does he have? It's house is being a little silly, but Pestilent Breath, uh, Pestilent Birth, and uh, then just R of Pestilence. So nothing too fancy. Stand your ground, you can see. Uh, Plague Rash. Some good little buffs, debuffs, a uh, help of abomination in the center, providing some anti-large. So, three casters in my opponent's army, so potentially Kazrak's going to get a lot of use, and you can see the moment things start, uh, immediately they're kicking off. You can see Warfire Throws roasting my Gore Herd, and doing actually quite a bit of damage here. That's about, it's almost a thousand damage on the Gore Herd, uh, in a single burst there, but immediately the Ungor Raiders return fire, uh, start beating up on those Warfire Throws, and you can see the Gores are going to start to gap close incredibly quickly, these Skaven Slaves are going to fall apart, and uh, things are going to start going downhill for my opponent. You can see the Warfire Throws here being seen off by this push. And my opponent here does engage with the Plague Priest. Uh, his Skaven Slaves and Planet Rats are going to push into the Gore Herd, which is a fight that the Gore Herd will probably win. He does get a little breath attack there against the Ungors, but um, 
in the meantime, we are pushing and I've immediately pulled the Centigors. You can see they're charging in from all sides. And I'm actually going to pull the right Centigors right past this infantry uh, coming into this flank to try to help out. You can see the Skaven Slaves here completely collapsing. And over here, my opponent is doing his best to shut down these Gores, but um, it's going to take him a while to kill him. So in the meantime, you can see over here, the Poison One Globadier is getting jumped by some angry, angry Centigors. Uh, despite their 100 armor, their melee stats are just way too bad to survive for an extended period of time. And you can see Devolve does go down, and it's going to start melting these Clan Rats and these Stormmen. These Stormmen were really kind of an important anchor unit for my opponent here, uh, and because they're being pounded by the two Chariots and by the Black Orange Ravagers, they're actually going to collapse, which is really significant. Because my, my opponent has lost one of his only two strong holding units in the space of a few seconds. And you can see they're routing. Devolve, of course, drops leadership. And these guys just can't stand their own. All over the place. In the meantime, you can see things decisively shifting in the Beastman's favor in a few seconds. Over here, rear charge from Centigors is going to shatter the Caven Slaves. Um, and the Gores are then going to be able to mop up the Clan Rats over here. Centigors once again mopping up Skaven Slaves. And the Sons of Gores wiping out this Plague Priest, you can see, has been forced into full retreat. My archers are going to disengage. And I'm going to throw the Butchers of Kalkengard into the fray here just to tie down these Clan Rats and Skaven Slaves. With their regen and pretty monstrous melee defense of 60, they're basically untouchable to these low end chaff troops. My opponent, in the meantime, has help in Abomination, which really needs to be on top of the Kazrak or on top of my Butchers, is instead stuck you fighting Black Horns Ravagers, so that's a huge waste of the potential, essentially. Uh, now, granted, my opponent has managed to rout off a few troops. He finally does mop up and push off the Gore Horde. Uh, Occasionally, some, some of my units do get mauled enough. You can see over here, the Gore Horde breaks, the Black Horns Ravagers can take, get a tear out, but uh, all in all, the thing <laughs> is just falling apart for my opponent. Over here, the Gore Horde will hold, the Ungor Raiders will keep firing in. See Kazrak running amok, and you can see that debuff on uh, Lord Skrullk here, who has lost uh, 18 armor, he's down by 9 melee defense, it's going to make him a little more vulnerable to the Butchers, uh, but I'm tr trying to keep Kazrak moving constantly, I'm trying to deal with the Storm Runa Sword and Board, uh, because I don't want Kazrak getting stuck in place and uh, sort of stuck. Uh, fighting the Helped Abomination. That's the key here, is to keep my big units moving, keep them running away from the Helped Abomination, while the tearing apart the rest of my opponent's army. You can see the Plague Monk, Plague Monk's being seen off by archery fire at that point, they're just going to disintegrate. Um, it's just a few Skaven Slaves at this point, you can see some Clan Rats on the periphery, but bet with the Centigore charges, and then you can see I'm keeping all my cavalry moving. I chase a lot of units off, I chase units off the field, and then I'm immediately pulling my Centigores back into the fray, diving in, keeping them moving. Uh, keeping the pressure onto my opponent, really keeping my opponent's feet to the fire here. These clan rats being forced off by the centigors. Um, over here, the uh, Helped Abomination is a little bit confused. It's just taking well, just a constant stream of fire from the Ungor Raiders, uh, which will whittle it down over time. You can see over here the Stormmen, despite their best efforts, are pincered from three sides. Over here, the Butchers of Kalkengard, with the help of Kazrak, just tearing apart Lord Skralk, uh, who really just doesn't stand a chance. And at this point, with the, uh, you can see over here, I'm kind of trying to force path my Sons of Goros around this Plague Priest, who is melting them down pretty quickly, with, uh, but once we get a nice little surround on him, he's really not going to stand a chance. And you can see my opponent's army at this point is actually going to shatter. So, a pretty straightforward victory for the Beastmen. A lot of mobility in there. The Dark Mail actually surprisingly helped <laughs> against some of those units, uh, because Kazrak was pretty close to some of them. Uh, he got pretty close to Skrullk at sometimes, he got pretty close to the Plague Priest, and it, the uh, Dark Mail actually helped debuff them enough, or debuff them a good bit. Um, keep in mind that a minus 18 armor on a Plague Priest is 20% uh, of their armor down. On Skrullk, it's over 50% of his armor off, so it, it makes him a lot more vulnerable to damage, especially from non-AP units. Um, and Kazrak himself is a pretty competitive lord. I think one of the reasons he doesn't you don't see him very much is because he is a lot more susceptible to sniping than Morgur, and um, he doesn't have a niche with cheap Cygor spam the way Malagor does. Uh, but all in all, Kazrak can definitely apply the hurt. He, um, You can see over here almost 100 kills. Some of those were against Stormmen, honestly. Some were against decent targets. Uh, he definitely laid the smack down a little bit on Skrullk and uh, was doing a good job just running amok. You can see why most of my opponent's army got wiped out to a man, uh, which is really a testament to just how mobile and damaging those beastmen can be. Uh, and yeah, Kazrak was definitely a big contributor to that. So don't underestimate that. The Bration of the Wild devolved just melting that front line such a valuable skill, and I almost never see it used. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, it is an expensive skill. It costs, I think, 20 wins of magic to cast it, but it does so much damage. And without leadership debuff, you can really crack units quickly and uh, melt the front line really, really fast. Uh, for the rest of the build, you know, Gores, Ungors, they'll do well against anything short of Stormrun. Uh, and even against Stormrun, they'll do okay, just because Stormrun doesn't have the best melee stats. Um, the Ungor Raider is just a decent support tool. They did well at zoning off the Warp Fire Throwers and then dealing with the... Uh, with the help of Abomination, so just an overall good job there from them. The Centigors, of course, running amok in the back line. Total disruption tool, over 100 kills on two of them, so really, really good job there. And the Sons of Gorus, not raking in a lot of kills, but really they were focused on mostly on sniping out enemy heroes. They were sniping out 
plague priest and then the second plague priest so they couldn't be really be expected to get that many kills and the butchers yeah, also a great job so really a unit in my list here I think essentially played its role and was pretty useful for my opponent's build I don't think it's the most competitive really against beastmen uh, it's not that actually that I don't think uh, it's that much of a sort of gimmicky or trolley build but it's definitely a little light on AP or units that can withstand a Bestigore charge. One of the big problems for rats is that, or against Beastmen, is Beastmen are very shock heavy. If they can pile into you and shock in all your army, you are in for a serious problem. Uh, you are, you're going to feel a lot of hurt. And this army can't really stand up to a shock strategy, like uh, with the Gores, the Ungors. Um, really, I think you're better off bringing Plague Monks against Beastmen. Um, bring some Clan Rat Spears and Stormwind Halberds for the periphery. Uh, to deal with centigors, bring maybe some uh, slingers to zone off uh, centigors with throwing ma weapons or ungor raiders, and then really concentrate your main strike force into heroes with the de armor debuffs and units of plague monks um, and poison and that sort of those sorts of debuffs because you you essentially if you play the, this sort of strategy maybe some a ma massive stormwind could be okay as well but you need to, at that point you need something to deal with heavily armored infantry like uh, bestigors because if built like this while it might seem pretty well balanced and might it's obviously centered around these plague priests melting me down uh, it completely plays into the beastman's strength the beastman's strength is shock and awe uh, they're going to pile into you even if i had gone with the best core build i'd have piled into my opponent crushed his lines in seconds his units would have been full route and um it was just snowballed from there it leaves the, all these units isolated and unable to hold up and th that's a serious problem uh, you need to have some some way of dealing with the be beastman's shock and awe some factions can match that shock and awe some factions can just avoid it um and uh, in some cases, heavy cav can be a really powerful tool, but obviously it's given to have that, so you have to go with something else. So I, d I don't think this is the most competitive build really against Beastmen. Uh, like I said, I'd probably go with Plague Monks and a more uh, shock heavy build myself. Uh, use Clan Rat summons to disrupt my opponent's formations, that sort of stuff. Nonetheless, good game to my opponent. He doesn't have a username here. I don't know why um, he didn't game either, but uh, good game. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you find it entertaining. Hope you find it funny to watch a dark mail actually get used for once. Uh, it's a very expensive item and not in most not useful in most cases, but um, definitely can be used. Uh, I definitely had some fun using it. So, I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, anything like that, be sure to share them, and I will respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Why we're now.